posted, I think, and um, we'll have people drop in as, as we go. And um, I, I think, you know, I'll also be recording this. And so I'll upload this to for everyone who wasn't able to make it. But um, basically, I wanted to go over our, our next assignment, which is a two a two part assignment um, that involves uh, value and pencil shading. And I'm going to quickly go through some images. And um, let's see, let me share the screen here. And um, let's see. Okay, so um, basically I wanted to go through our, our next um, assignment and it really is gonna have a lot to do with shading as, as we think of it. So we're gonna be using uh, all pencil and erasers. And um, like in this image here, the thing to remember about uh, shading and value is it has everything to do really with just light. So it's really about uh, whether it's daylight or a lamp, um, it's, it's the light that's gonna be defining the objects. So in this drawing here, you can see there's a very clear a light source, which is off to the left. And it's giving, um, it's giving a very clear highlight and cast shadows. So keep that in mind as, as you guys set up uh, the still life in this next drawing. And in this drawing, even though it's a lot lighter, it also has, um, hey Levi, um, it also right. has, uh, you can even, you can still uh, pick up that it's uh, the direction of the light source. And in this case, it's coming from the same direction that the viewer is. So it's coming kind of forward and hitting those um, objects and it's giving them uh, real definition and, and sense of volume. So keep that in mind that this really is about light and how light works in the world and how it falls with the objects. And, and that the rules are kind of the same for everything, whether it's, you know, a drawing of a mouse or, or um, uh, or whether it's a drawing of a mountain range, light kind of works the same. Um, and there's a certain predictability to it. Like in this drawing, you kind of have a good example. It's the light source is literally in the, um, in the drawing, like up on the right here. And you can see that same light source is doing some interesting things and in casting uh, shadows and, and, and locating the, the closest parts of each, each object to light or highlight. So think of, um, you know, when you're setting up your still life, think of, and, and since we're, unfortunately, we're not um, in class, so we're going to have to improvise some of this, but think of if you have desk lamps around um, or, uh, you know, any kind of lighting you have around that you could use to, to light uh, the objects you set up, because it's going to be sort of five objects in the still life. And, um, and if, you know, basically the, the idea is to try to get a single light source. So uh, if you do this sometimes at night, it's easier to control the light. Or sometimes if you, we don't have kind of really good lights laying around the house. So in that case, I just say, put it in front of, of a window or somewhere where you can, or even in a patio, um, but somewhere where it's getting direct sunlight or something. So kind of keep that in the back of your head when you set up the the next still life because light is really important so think of either you know desk lamps uh, spotlights or just in front of a window where it's getting some some nice sunlight that that gives it some highlights and, so, and kind of this is a good, good example here of why that's important and something as simple as an egg because it's giving us um the high, it's giving us the, the really, the, it's the only thing that's defining it. Because obviously if we turn the light off, everything is dark. 
So this single light source, we're seeing the highlight, the cast shadows. So it really is important that we try on this drawing to, to isolate the light. And you can see, like if you remember when we did our um, value scales, um, that why that's important is because because you know minimally that's sort of the most basic value range is, is about five um but with a, an average still life you should have you know a dozen or more um different uh arrangements a, a different um values because uh you know objects are complex and light hits them in very different ways but the thing that's predictable and, and important to think about is there's something, it's really a dramatic term, but it's called the line of termination in a, in a drawing. Um, and, it's, and it's really important actually, because, and, and keep it in the back of your mind as you're just looking at objects from time to time and notice something that line of termination is important because Sometimes you have to really look for it if light's really diffuse or, or it's indirect lighting, but it's really important because that's the point at which light, uh, at which the object starts turning away from the light source and into shadow. And it's at that point that it reveals something important about the object, which is this simple, you know, egg shape here. And you can see the shadow kind of following along with it. So that is in more complex, complex shapes too, really everything, but it takes some kind of training yourself to look for it. So even on an object like this, you see this very clear definition and that, that would be the, the terminator line as, um, or the line of termination in this object would be, because that's, that's sort of that spot where the, where the object is turning away from the light. And then a couple of other important aspects of it are um, the highlight, obviously, and that's basically just anywhere learning to, to locate the brightest spot of, uh, you know, on an object from the highlights. And sometimes it's very faint. If the object's reflective, it's easier to see. But for this drawing, it's important because that's essentially going to be what you leave for just the white of the paper. Basically. And everything else is going to be shaded with some tone of pencil. So that's another thing to kind of keep in mind and look for. And another, uh, you know, another important, really important, and kind of uh, we tend to forget about it, but reflected light is extremely important in, in drawing anything in objects that, that have volume because what happens objects don't uh, like where you see the egg turning into a uh, shadow here but you'll notice if you look closely it gets very slightly lighter towards the the other side of the object and that's because light is hitting the surface of the table and bouncing back up and giving a little bit of dim dim light to that bottom and you can see they, they this person did a good job in the egg drawing and that you can see it gets very subtly lighter it's not nearly as bright as the highlight but it's enough that it, it um, gives it uh, that effect of giving it a full sense of volume so keep that in mind in drawing any kind of simple object or co complex object is generally almost always there's light that bounces back and hits hits it and that is really an important way of make, uh, making an object not feel flat when you draw it is look for those little subtle shifts. And, and it really is the, the longer you look at it, the more you'll see it. And you know, a similar thing happens with the cast shadows. Um, and that also generally follows a pretty similar and predictable pattern in that you can see um, the light is just where literally the cast shadow is where the object is blocking the light. And then there's something, another odd term called an occlusion shadow. And what that means is it gets very slightly darker the closer it gets to the, the object itself. So it might be hard to see here, but that's another thing to keep in mind. Just like uh, with the reflected light, the bottom of the object gets a little lighter. It does a similar thing in the cast shadow in that the shadow gets darker the closer it gets to the object. 
and that generally is going to be about the um, the darkest uh, part of the drawing often is, is those little areas there. Um, so what we're look what we'll look for at the um, final stage of the, the drawing we'll be working on is a fully realized drawing that um, is entirely as much as possible value and tone and shading. And it's going to take, um, it's, there's, you know, you'll have several, many weeks to, to do this drawing because it does take, you know, have some patience and allow and, um, you know, get your, um, the kind of motion you shade with down so you're comfortable with it. And also understand that it takes many, many um, passes over an area to, to get the tone you want. So for example, and, and, and I have this on the Canvas site, but basically this is kind of the a process of how I'd like you guys to, to start this drawing. And it's what I'd like you to do if it is work from, a, you know, to set up a still life with um, a single light source, whether it's a desk lamp or uh, daylight coming through a window. Um, and what I'd like you to do is, if possible, print it out. It can be in black and white or color. Um, use light objects, because lighter objects will reflect light back at you a little better. Like I, these are sort of beige and light color objects that I had lying around the house. So something that that's, is kind of lighter that will reflect light. Um, and when you start transferring the drawing, what I'd recommend is this will be on um, you know, 18 by 24 paper is just freehand draw, like I have just very scrub, scrubbily drawn in these lines that kind of go from corner to corner and uh, across from side to side and top to bottom. And then I did the same thing on the printed out photo of the still life. And I would just recommend you guys doing this because it's, it's, it's not using a grid, it's just using kind of an, a little framework that helps when you transfer the drawing to line up, uh, you know, line up uh, landmarks that you see. So I would recommend that, like if, if you prefer to freehand drawing it, draw it in, but it is a helpful way without going into a full grid system of, you know, you know, basically in the photo that I took that at the very center of this drawing is going to be the lid of this cap. And then as you're blocking it in, you'll know that in, um, you know, what lines up on the diagonal, lower left diagonal. So just things like that, I, I would recommend because it helps. Since this drawing is mostly about shading, I don't want you guys to have to struggle too much with um, laboring over the proportions. But the proportions are, are important in this that you get them kind of blocked in and just minimally uh, have contour lines to, to draw them. But don't get into too much detail because this drawing is going to be more about shading. So what I'd like you to do is, uh, sorry, at the end of this process, what you'll do is you'll um, just send me um, a copy of the, of the drawing in progress. Just if there's, just if there's any um, proportional issues, I can you know, suggest uh, something to adjust or fix. Um, but then the next step is you're going to start the, the toning and shading process. And it's, it's, I recommend this sort of step by step um, uh, because you're gonna be working 18 by 24 is a large area to be shading. Um, so it's, it's good to kind of have a method to it. And what I would suggest, and there's a demonstration on the canvas that shows this, uh, is start with finding the just the very darkest spots in the drawing and with a 6B pencil, shading those in lightly um, and, and not digging in too much of the paper. But when you look at your at the picture of the drawing of the, of the still life, notice there's going to be very little, really, really dark uh, parts usually. It's going to be okay. Less than you think. And it's going to be more like at the seams of where objects sit on the table uh, or like where the egg is sitting here. It's going to be kind of very, uh, very few areas are truly going to be as dark as the 6B pencil. So the next step is then go to the 4H pencil and everywhere that you don't see um, 
everywhere that you don't see a highlight, and this is why I was mentioning before, uh, or really bright spot, you're gonna tone all that out pretty much completely with a 4-H light pencil. So with that, you can make very broad gestural sort of um, you know, uh, shading marks with the overhand grip, which I'd recommend because it gives you a more uh, broader side of the pencil. Um, and then after you work with a 4-H pencil, um, you would move into step three, which is the 2-H pencil, and you kind of work back in and slowly getting darker um, with uh, specific areas. You know, you can use your erasers to make any adjustments that you notice. Um, and, um, but, uh, and then eventually you'll, you'll go into the fourth step, which is the next darkest pencil, pencils, which are the HB and the 2B. And those are much softer and they'll darker and we'll, the, you'll be able to really flesh out the remaining volumes. And what you wanna do, you'll notice from like step one is you're slowly gonna be eliminating all of the contour lines and basically filling them either with tone or uh, basically erasing them. So eventually the idea is to have just a value, purely value drawing um, and uh, also, uh, let's see, oh yeah, I, I was gonna say with these is also um, don't use blending stumps or smudge the drawing intentionally. Use the pencil to, to do all the shading. Um, blending stumps are really work best for the charcoal and there's a charcoal assignment before this one on the site. That is where you'll be using blending stumps because it works best. But with pencil, it tends to just kind of smear it and you kind of, it's hard to control at that point. So I would recommend don't smear or use blending stumps with, um, with this part of the drawing. But, um, uh, but was uh, so far with any questions about that as I'm, as I'm going, let's see, let me transfer you back. And um, the other thing quickly, um, is, you know, you probably already have used this, but a really useful, um, because you'll be, you know, going over um, these area, big areas of the drawing, you know, multiple times. So it's like have patience and kind of treat it as a meditative kind of thing when you're, when you're shading, because it really uh, kind of, you need to kind of be in a specific mindset and don't rush and kind of have patience with it. And think of it like an old, old type of like black and white photo, how they slowly develop, kind of think of it in that way. Um, use like, I would recommend like the vinyl eraser for adjusting, you know, big areas. Um, pencil eraser is really nice for getting in and adjusting the small areas. And um, if you haven't used yet the kneaded eraser, um, it's really useful. It, it should come like in a square pack in your kit, but kind of mold, you know, uh, squeezing it till it gets to be sort of whatever shape you want, but it really works really nicely in, um, if you have too much of a shaded area of basically, you know, tapping on the paper with it and it picks up just kind of small amounts of the graphite without it getting too, uh, too much of it erased. Um, but that's, that's what I would uh, recommend with that. But, um, and has uh, basically, that's, that's all I wanted to kind of go over with you guys quickly. And I have um, a couple of demonstrations on the, um, uh, on the canvas that show some kind of speeded up uh, ways of, of shading. And you'll notice just quickly, you all will have a slightly different feel to your, um, to the way you shade, just because you all have a different, um, you know, um, way of drawing. But there, the the main thing is to find the the kind of way that's right for you. Some will have more of an edge to it, but the main thing is to remember is is also bring out. You guys made some nice um, value scales and pencil. I'd recommend bringing those out and comparing them with uh, the photo that you're working from of the still life um, and kind of spend some time really isolating 
where the, the darkest areas are, where the highlights are, um, those type of things. 